Hi, welcome to Rachel She Says Chapel. We have a few announcements to share with you. Upcoming chapel speakers are Mackenzie Thomas on Friday, November 6th, and a special Veterans Day Chapel will be held in Ora Auditorium on Monday, November 9th at 1140 AM. There are still some open chapel dates in the spring semester. Stop in the chapel office to see the open date to schedule your senior chapel. Stepping Up Men's Bible Study meets on Saturday mornings from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. in the Watto Lounge in the McKelvey Campus Center. Breakfast is provided. Come and meet Faculty Spotlight on Monday, November 16th at 8 p.m. in Berlin Lounge with Dr. Sarah Rose Lynch, Assistant Professor of Education. Seekers Fellowship is once again sponsoring Operation Christmas Child and will be packing shoe boxes on Tuesday, November 10th at, 10 th at 8.30 p.m. in Berlin Lounge. Looking for small items to include in the boxes such as toiletries, small toys, crayons, anything fun for a child. Fellowship groups are meeting this week. Seekers at 8.30 on Tuesdays in Berlin Lounge, Newman Club at 8.30 on Wednesday in the Water Room, FC at 8.30 on Thursday in Witherspoon Maple. Habitat for Humanity chapter meeting is this week on Thursday, November 5th at 6 p.m. in Mueller Theater. Can you all please join me in prayer? Direct and help us, O Lord, in all our deeds that in all our works begun, continued and ended in you. We may glorify your holy name and finally, by your mercy, obtain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, Amen. If you would have told me a year ago that I would be introducing Rachel to you all, I would have said that you're crazy. But since then, Rachel has become one of my best friends at Westminster. We might be completely opposite people, but a love of Harry Potter, Once Upon a Time, and musicals brought us together. In that time, we've gone on choir tour together and been roommates for a week, We've had late night movie marathons and game nights together. We've been through ups and downs together. For all that, I can tell you that Rachel Shusett is one of the hardest working, most genuine and kind people I have ever met. Rachel, I am so proud of everything that you've accomplished and I cannot wait to hear what you have to say because I know that it will be as strong and inspirational as you. So I'm not Rachel, but <laughs> I'm going to re, uh, be reading Mark chapter 10, verse 27. Um, Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals, it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. And now Rachel. Um, so I'm not talking just yet. Um, my friend Katie and I are going to sing a song just to lead into everything. Feet may 
fail and fear surrounds me you never failed and you won't start now and i will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for i am Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. My faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. My faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. And I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans arise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I am yours, and you are mine. Okay, um, I'm reading from John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. Then each of them went home while Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning, he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and making her stand before all of them. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They said this to test him so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let anyone that is among you and without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away, one by one, beginning with the elders, and Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go on your way, and from now on, do not sin again. Now I'm actually going to talk. Um, first of all, thank you everyone for coming. It means a lot, and I like seeing your shining faces, so that's good. Um, okay. I am very forgiving of others, but I have a hard time doing the same for myself, and I know that many can relate. It's easy to look at ourselves and say, wow, I really screwed up, and how do I get past this? Fortunately, we have a really awesome God that envelops us in grace every day, all day. Like Jen read for us, for us it is impossible, but through God, all things are possible, even forgiveness. God has forgiven each and every one of us for the lies we've told, the tests we haven't studied for, the plans we've canceled at the last minute, and even the unspeakable things that we have done to ourselves and others. This is demonstrated in the story of the adulterous woman that Alyssa just read. In it, the Pharisees bring a woman, Jesus a woman, that has been caught in the act of adultery. According to the law of those days, women that did this were to be stoned, but Jesus bent down and began writing in the dust before answering, let anyone that has not sinned throw the first stone. One by one, each of the Pharisees walk away until it is only he and the woman. A few summers ago, I spent almost three months serving as a camp counselor at Ligonier Camp and Conference Center. While there, I participated in Bible studies with the other female counselors. This is one of the passages that we looked at, and we all were very intrigued by the fact that he didn't just stand there, but he knelt and wrote on the ground. We came up with a few hypotheses, Alyssa, for the, as to what he might have done when writing in the dust. And the one that stands out most prominently for me is that he was writing grace over and over again in the dust. Now, assuming that the climate back then was as similar to how it is now in the Middle East, it can be really windy and really dusty, which would mean that he was writing grace over and over again. 
I really, really love the idea of this. This theory is a visual demonstration of the never-ending grace that is provided to us through Jesus. Jesus sat there for who knows how long, rewriting and rewriting that five-letter word. I know I don't have the patience for myself to allow that much grace, and my guess is the mo most of you don't either. But God does, and that is shown time and time again in the Bible. In fact, according to the internet, the word grace is mentioned nearly 4,000 times in the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, which, that's a lot. I can't even imagine that. This is something that I've carried with me over the past few years. College is a time of mistakes from choosing the wrong major, not studying enough for class, expressing your strain, stress in negative ways, and straight up not knowing who you are. The last portion of this I have struggled with a lot. While at Ligonier, I was immersed in God's stuff day in and day out. It was easy to be strong in my faith and feel secure in the promises that God gives us. Going from there to be back at school was a very hard transition for me. I no longer had time in the morning to sit with my Bible and notebook and examine scripture. I was no longer teaching Bible study to my middle schoolers every day or singing praise music every night. I found myself in a spiritual rut and I hated myself for it. I felt like it should be easy for me because I grew up in the church with my dad as a pastor and then I spent a whole summer just doing scriptural things. Um, it wasn't easy though. I like every other person struggle with it and as much as I beat myself up about it, I also know that God is up there saying, Rach, chill. It's okay, you aren't perfect and I don't expect you to be. So just keep doing your best and I'll take care of you no matter what. So I, so I finished college and continue to make mistake after mistake because I am human. I will remember that God will continue to forgive me time and time again, and thank goodness for it. Thanks again for coming. I guess that's the end of this. So my dad's gonna come up, and he's, after gym talks, going to do stuff. <laughs> Rachel, thanks. Um, I, I like uh, your phrase, Rach, chill because I think that God actually sends that message to us all the time, especially when we're trying to control our lives, or we're trying to run from God, or we're trying to run from ourselves, and the list goes on. So grace is about that. Rach, chill. So as is uh, our uh, kind of tradition, when we have a student who's mom or dad are pastors we invite them to come forward and share the benediction so it's our honor today to have uh, rachel's dad steve here so uh reverend steve come for, come on up friends be fearless in the pursuit of what sets your soul on fire find god in everyone and in everything Glorify God in everything you say and everything you do. Be who God made you be, and know that you are loved. Secure the knowledge of the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit are with you now, and will be forever. Thanks be God. <laughs> 